faster than a pitch man at a county fair. In chunks no bigger than a canned pineapple. New, improved, popular. Endorsed by experts and available for a limited time only. This is Quick Zips, the late night edition. Sexuality education, fast. I'm Galena Mines, and welcome to our show. A text message from Savvy Sales Girl asked us, How can I persuade my partner to do what's right? Persuasion is a communication skill people use to influence other people's choices and decisions. People can try to persuade you to do something, or you can try to persuade them. You are probably already a master persuader, but you may not know it. For example, have you ever said something like this? Mom, after I clean the kitchen for you, can I have the ice cream? Or how about this? You said last week you would take me shopping. Would today be a good time to do it? Both of these examples use techniques that increase the likelihood the other person will do what you want them to do. Persuasion strategies can work for you or against you. They can be used to achieve your goals or to get you to do things you wouldn't otherwise do. The word rocker captures several common persuasive tricks. R stands for reciprocating. When you do something for someone, he or she will likely want to do something for you. For example, if you tell your partner, remember when I took you shopping? Well, now I'd like you to buy me lunch because I'm out of money. You have triggered your partner's natural desire to return the favor. O stands for obligating. Getting your partner to verbally commit to a behavior increases the likelihood that he or she will act consistently with that commitment. For example, if you ask your partner, you're going to buy condoms, correct? And he answers, yes. Then you have obligated him to a specific action. C stands for commanding. Messages from someone in authority have a powerful effect on influencing people. For example, if you tell your partner, the Centers for Disease Control says the best protection against STDs is abstinence. You have used the command authority from an expert source, in this case a federal agency, to influence your partner's behavior. K stands for copying, and S stands for spell check. People often look to other people for cues on appropriate behavior and then copy them. For example, if you tell your partner, I've talked to Jennifer and she and Scott aren't having sex. You have used the behavior of other people to help shape your and your partner's behavior. E stands for engaging. The more someone likes you, the more they'll want to do what you ask. For example, if you listen to, respect, and have fun with your partner, you'll be more engaging, and hence your partner's willingness to do what you ask. The last letter, R, stands for reducing. Making something seem in short supply increases a person's motivation to act. For example, if you tell your partner, I've only got two minutes before I have to leave, what's your decision? You are reducing time to motivate your partner to make the decision. Now, the examples we've given above demonstrate the positive side of persuasion, the ways persuasion can be used to help you reduce your STI risk. Because you can use the techniques when discussing remaining abstinent, how to protect each other from STDs in pregnancy, or whatever other behaviors affect your sexual health relationship. Unfortunately, persuasion can also be used for negative purposes that can increase your risk. For example, negative reciprocation. Hey, I bought you that bracelet you wanted. Now you gotta give me what I want. Negative obligating. So you love me, right? And you care about me, right? So we should make love, right? Or something like, you said you wanted to have sex with me, and now you're saying you don't? Negative commanding. You know, a speaker at school said condoms don't really work, so we don't need one. Negative copying. None of the guys I know use a condom, why should I? Or, you may hear something like, but everyone else is doing it. Negative engaging. I love you, and I know you love me, and I want to love you even more. Negative reducing. Look, baby. I have to be home soon, so don't ruin the short time we have together by saying we're pushing our sexual relationship too far. I need you so bad, and I know you need me. The best way to defend against such attacks is to tell your partner you know what they are trying to do and assert your rights. For example, you're using a persuasion tactic to get me to engage in risky behavior. It won't work. I don't want to have sex. And thus, the answer to Savvy Sales Girl's question. Be persuasion literate. Use rocker to persuade your partner to do the right thing and to understand when people are trying to persuade you. 
That's it for this segment of Quick Zips, the late night edition. Remember, being manipulated into doing something you don't want to do has no place in a healthy relationship. Be savvy. Be safe. See you next time. This episode of Quick Zips is brought to you by Hugh Wackman, who reminds you to seek treatment from a doctor if you think you have an STI. It's always worked for me, every single time. Me too. Hey, you want to go out sometime? And please remember, you can't always tell by looking.